Good morning and welcome to Make Your Week Happen with Matt Miller. What's up, what's up? I'm Ryan Zolan. And I'm Matt Miller. So this show is going to be your start to the week, a fresh start, a way to set the table and make sure that you are set up for success all week long. And we're going to help make your week happen. So we want to hear back from you of what would be helpful there. Help us mold this show. And for the first few, Ryan's going to join me and make sure that we really get this off the ground and uh, can bring as much value as we can to you. Absolutely, man. I'm, I'm excited. It's gonna I'm be, pumped. It's going to be fun, man. It's going to be a fun show. Matt and I were talking about how can we collaborate more? How do we imp- like improve the community and just make a difference? And the more we were talking about it, um, Matt and I are both like some morning guys. And you know, we were just talking about what kind of show can we put out there for some value. And we came to this. So we want to be able to provide some motivating uh, key factors for you guys, some information, statistics, and also give you guys some direction and guidance as to how we structure our week and how we'd recommend you structuring yours as well. Absolutely. A uh, little bit of background on me. I am a full-time real estate agent here in Phoenix, Arizona. I'm also an investor, and uh, I feel like it's super important to bring this message to other agents and really anybody that's interested in real estate in general and just kind of share how we got started in kind of how you can have continued success here. Two years ago, I had no idea what wholesaling was. Um, I got in rooms with guys like Ryan, um, guys like his friend Templeton Walker, and learned about really what what this tool was to put in your belt. And it's helped me with sellers, buyers. It's really helped expand my business. And our hope here is for other agents too, is to bring you into this and give you tips to really expand yourself and realize that you're worth way more than 3% and also prove that you don't need to be just a wholesaler, just an investor. You can have a healthy traditional business alongside this as well. And I think that we both agree that it really all comes back to how you're, how you're starting your weeks, how you're structuring your days and how you're attacking your goals each day. Oh, without a doubt, man. I mean, it's all about the discipline. Like at the end of the day, I always tell everybody that this business is simple, but it's not easy. Like a lot of it is the mentality um, and just being consistent on your day-to-day actions. I mean, those are all typical things that you hear no matter what it is, inspirational. People will say, you have to have routines, you got to be consistent, it's mindset, this and that. But at the end of the day, if you're not taking the right consistent action, if you aren't doing the reps to have a better mindset, if you aren't surrounding yourself with the people that are helping uplift you, these are all cliche things, but they're actually very, very important. So I think that's super, super awesome you brought that up. Um, And then also, too, I love the the agent investor background. So I'll give a little bit of background, too. Appreciate all you guys hopping on here, watching it from the channel. Um, I want to give you guys just a quick overview of what I do and who I am if you guys, if this is your first time checking this out. Uh, but my name is Ryan Zolan. I am a 24 year old real estate agent and investor as well out in Arizona. Um, I've been doing this for just about six years now coming up on that, that renewal period this year, but, uh, I started off as a traditional agent as well. And I realized very quickly that there is just, there's a ceiling at the real estate side on the traditional um, side of the business. So what I mean by traditional side of the business is in a transaction, we have a real estate agent who represents either a buyer or a seller. And so Matt and I are both licensed agents where we'd, re- we'd represent clients and we'd get paid commission when the transaction was done. Um, but similar to Matt, I found that the investment side was a lot more lucrative and it also allowed me to have more freedom and flexibility in my day to day. So I transitioned over to the investment space and what Matt means by wholesaling for those of you that might not have uh, been familiar with the real estate wholesaling term, uh, we basically get properties under contract and then we take that same contract contract and we assign it out to an end buyer and we make the difference. So it is that typical, what is it? That $0 out of pocket, no cash, no credit, none of your own money spiel. It's a real thing, and that's what we do as wholesalers, and we provide a lot of value to the marketplace in getting properties fixed up and sold to people that are going to turn around and make them for a profit. So that's kind of our brief little overview. We want to make sure, obviously, you guys know who we are as co-hosts, um, and then anybody else that Matt brings on, too. We're super excited for you guys to be able to meet people throughout the industry, and like Matt said, get your week started off right. Yeah, excited to be bringing in some guests that I think will really have unique perspectives. Um, anywhere from people that are full, just full time investors to people that are full time agents. And there's so many different ways to make money as a real estate entrepreneur. I think that's the most exciting part for me is getting people in here and kind of showing you, hey, how do they get set up? How do they make their weeks happen? For sure. And what do they do to actually stay accountable and and get it going. Well, and absolutely. And I think it's similar to life as it is to real estate. There's a million different ways to do this. It's just a matter of finding what works best for you and then staying in that same pattern and routine. So 
Um, I, I pulled some stats. I like to like just have some talking points and things. And I think it's really cool for this first episode to kind of go through Absolutely. Um, some stuff about Monday mornings. But these are like kind of directional things. And if you're listening to this or watching this, I want you to write down these notes because I think this is super important. So the first thing is that it's, again, going back to mindset. But you need to understand Monday morning is a fresh start. So it doesn't matter how your weekend was. It doesn't matter how last week was. Monday morning is your do over. And every single time I talk to somebody, the one thing I like to ask them is like, if you could go back and change something, what would it be? And as much as like, I don't like talking about this, it actually just really opens my eyes. It makes me realize a lot of people in life, they've got regrets. They have the, the, I wish I could go and do this do over or reset button and just go back to X day and redo it. And if I had gone back with what I know now, I could have done this or this differently. What they need to understand is that we all have a reset button and it starts on Monday morning. What are you going to do to change this next day, the changes the next week, the changes your next month, next year, so on and so forth? So that's number one. Number two, I think it's important to like set that vision, that goal. And what you need to do is you need to start the week with looking forward to something. And I think that's super important because if you don't have a reason for wanting to do it, I don't know if you're really going to have that true like push or desire to want to make it happen. Right. Which is why the show Make Your Week Happen, here we are. Matt, what's something that you are looking forward to this week? What I'm looking forward to this week, I mean, I have uh, I have a few clients that I'm juggling that have some fun milestones coming up for their transactions, but probably more than anything, looking forward to a, we have some friends coming in town this weekend, we're going to have a, uh, a nice Saturday with them, so taking it off, which means that we really have to get cracking during the week here to for hit sure. those goals to make that the case. What about yourself? Uh, so me, Miles, and Jake are flying out to Milwaukee on Thursday, speaking over at an event uh, with Tony Romero, uh, the Hustle Harder event. So looking forward to that. And I, I really love that we both had different answers. One being like, even though, though mine's like work, it's travel, <laughs> right? Going out and speaking. But I like that. And then I like that yours, it shows people that it doesn't need to be work related. Right, like, exactly. You have to have balance. you have to have balance, and I, Milwaukee will be a lot of fun. It's an underrated city, the jewel of the Midwest. <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> uh, the the next thing I got on the list, guys, is that I want you to smile and practice gratitude. You know, we're laughing, we're smiling. It's up here. It's Monday morning. We want you guys to know that this is us genuinely. This is what we're like on a day to day basis. But in the morning specifically, if you don't wake up and have that energy, you've got to find a way to to instill it in yourself. So if it's as simple as making a mental note that I need to smile and, and, be, and have all this gratitude, okay, can you maybe do affirmations? Can you journal and make note of things X, Y, and Z that you're appreciative for for today? Like I'll tell you, as cheesy as this sounds, every day that I wake up, I wake up and the first thought that comes across my mind is game on, I've got another day. Because you never know when it's your last moment and it's something as dumb for a 24-year-old to say gratitude-wise that I'm happy to be alive. There's not many people that are on the younger side of the spectrum that are like, yeah, I'm thankful for this. It's all about that appreciation and that mindset. So I think it's important to to have those affirmations and journaling, whatever it is for you too. And I used to think that I was super guilty of this. I, I thought, hey, this is cheesy. This doesn't work. This is a waste of my time. No, it does work. I mean, you your mental game is how you're going to approach everything. You have to make sure that you're right up here. And for me, that starts each day waking up saying like, hey, who can I help today? affirming I'm a great agent, I'm a great investor, I'm gonna go make something happen, and yeah, I'm grateful that I'm able to get up, get moving, and attack this day the way I want to. Um, meditation for me has been a game changer, getting you in the right mind space. It takes 10 minutes a day, I highly recommend it. One of my mentors, uh, Brian North, got me on that about uh, six months ago, and it really just centers you and clears you up for the day, and, and I just feel invigorated to get after it. So I think that that's a really important thing to do to really start your day is either have an affirmation, have a journal, have somewhere to aim your thoughts towards the day to work towards your goal to that day, whatever that is. Oh, for sure. For sure. The next one is something that I feel like if you're not doing, you 1000% already should be doing this, but you need to set your priorities for the week. Again, going back yeah. to the obtaining the goal, if you don't know what the destination is, how are you going to get the roadmap to get to the destination? So it could be as simple as you have friends coming in this weekend. You already said, I've got to get going on the week because I know that this weekend I'm taking off. Okay, so what needs to happen then Monday to Friday? Is it a certain KPI structure that you're like, okay, I need to do X amount of calls, X amount of offers. I need to make sure that this, this, this in my personal life is taken care of. What is your current structure like? Absolutely. So Saturday is usually a work day for me. So what that means, a normal work day for me is usually about uh, anywhere from 
depending on what we have going on the day, 50 to 100 phone calls. So what that means today is uh, Monday morning attacking it, and we're going to make 75 calls today, mix of uh, – sellers, potential buyers, and other real estate agents to kind of go over, try to hit my goals for the week and just chunking that down, making them palatable, but looking forward and knowing what you're going to do. Cause nothing mm -hmm. feels worse than having something come up that you knew was going on, but didn't plan for. And then all of a sudden you're behind the eight ball. The next week you feel like you're behind and you feel like you're not doing enough. And then that's a, a, a repeating cycle that you can't get out of for sure. So to me, that looks like adjusting your KPIs uh, having an honest conversation with yourself, making sure that you're feeling good, what's on your schedule, what can you do. I'm not saying blow off commitments and, and get work done, but I'm saying right. be reasonable with what you have. If you know that you're going out of town on Thursday or Friday and you're not going to be able to get the work done, then yeah, sure. chunk it up, do a little bit more today yep. or you know, readjust your goals, pop that into next week, do something to make your week happen and get uh, get by the way you need to. No, I, I love that. I love that. And I think that it's important to find again what works best for you. I like to basically go through like a mental rundown with myself and um, the night before I want to have my checklist out of I know X, Y, and Z need to be done on the following day. And then I wake up and the very first thing I do is I go through and I make sure that I know what needs to be done on the current day that I'm on. So usually what I make sure is I have at least three to four non-negotiables. And these are typically things that might be a KPI. It might be like for example, like I just had to pay like quarter two taxes. So, okay. It's like those deadlines coming up. We've got specific things that have to be done by certain times. Uh, the last thing that I want you guys to make note of here too, for that list of things is going to be make time for something fun. And whether that is the meditation or journaling or doing something physically active, or maybe it's even just finding a, a downtime to go play video games, watch a movie, hang out with friends, whatever it is, you need to make time for something fun because this is all about work-life balance. And Brent always says this in the show that I do with him on Thursdays. Um, there is no such thing as balance. It's only harmony. So I want to even ch uh, challenge myself and change the wording there is that maybe it isn't balance, but it's finding that harmony. It's finding what works best for you in that rhythm and that flow. Because at the end of the day, I mean, you could say that you've got a routine, but if it's not something you're enjoying doing, then it's only going to be limited for a certain amount of time until you burn out with it. So, right. Exactly. What is the, uh, the fun thing that you're looking forward to this week? Uh, it can't be the trip. I know I was going to say, I feel like it has <laughs> to be separate from the trip. Um, honestly, I've been really enjoying, so we're over at real, it's a, it's a new brokerage and it's a multi-level marketing company. So I'm not going to sugarcoat it and try to put this whole spiel and pipe it up and then you know, bring everybody in. I mean, if you want to join us, great. But the thing with Real is that what we like um, is that I'm a part of this wealthy agent program with Ryan Pineda. And so we're really impacting the community by doing trainings where it's like me and like six or seven other people that we're all uh, the trainers in that program. So usually a few times per month, I'm able to spend a little bit of time with his community that he's building, which is a mixture of people that invest into the wealthy way, wealthy agent, um, or just at the downline at Real. And I'm able to spend usually an hour, hour and a half with like 15, 20 people pretty like one-on-one -on -one for, uh, for a good amount of time every month. So I get to do that today. Um, I was able to do it this last Friday as well. So it's just, it's like that engaging, fulfilling, interacting with the community. Yeah. Being able to give back it. And Ryan yeah. is a tough guy to lock down time with. So that's, uh, <laughs> that'd be cool. So yeah, being for a sure. you know, real, having those trainings to look forward to, uh, I'm in a different brokerage here in the Valley. I, uh, mine is I'm golfing tomorrow morning at uh, 6 AM with a, uh, another agent. That's a, uh, that's a friend of mine. That's in the investment space, great Airbnb guy. And yeah. we have a couple potential clients that we're looking to collaborate on that we're, uh, that we're going out with. So, uh, that's, that's my thing. And that's, that's uh, every week it's, it's golf. It's the addiction of every 30, uh, something year old. So, so I mean, we're, we're coming there. up though on our football season. So football season, I mean, my answer every week going forward is about to be Sunday. Sunday oh, hundred percent Sunday. So hundred percent. So it's all good stuff. Uh, the last note I want to leave you guys with on this first episode is that, um, I was trying to get some research. I want to obviously, like I said, give you guys some action steps and things to go through and take away from the show. Uh, there was this moment in realization, you know, as I'm stuck in traffic this morning, going through, trying to pull up a bunch of stuff that, I was like, man, I'm trying to find information statistics about Monday, but every other word I was typing into Google, it went like two completely separate ends of the spectrum. So it was like, why do Monday mornings suck? And why are Monday mornings the most stressful? Why do people usually have this bad thing happen to them on Monday morning? But then it's like, you start typing it the other way. And it's like, why are Monday mornings the most productive time of the week? Why is this the best day to get started with a routine? Why is it that if there are statistically 53 Mondays in a year that you are more likely going to make more money than X? Like it's just, there's so many different things. Right. My point of it all is that 
you're going to attract what you look for. So if you're going out there and you're seeking optimism and positivity and gratitude and, and love and appreciation, all these things, you're going to attract that. If you're going to go out there and have that, oh, it's Monday morning. Oh man, I can't wait for Friday of this week or Saturday of this week. You're already starting your week off wrong because you don't have the right foundation and the right mindset going into exactly. it. Exactly. So I think that's a super big nugget to leave you guys with. I want you to understand that what you put out into the world is what you're going to attract. So what are you going to attract this week? Yeah. Whether you think you can or you can't, you're absolutely right. So frame it. Mm. You can make it happen. We're going to be here every Monday to help you do that. Absolutely. We'll see you guys. We're going to be doing the show live at um, 8 a.m. Arizona time, Monday mornings. I'll be on the next few episodes with Matt, and then he'll be taking it over from there and running with it. We appreciate you guys tuning in on this first episode of Make Your Week Happen, and we will see you guys next week. See you Monday. Have a great week.